Hey everybody and welcome back to another video, welcome back to r slash I don't work here lady. I know we've seen quite a few of these lately, but honestly, they're just too good to resist. And this first post submitted by user slash madfamouslove is pretty damn amazing. This happened years ago. My dad's cousin Robert was visiting from Scotland for the first time. We live in Canada. He'd been taking turns staying at each of my dad's siblings that live nearby. That day, he was staying with my parents. We had had a nice lunch together at their home, but for dinner, we were going out to a nice restaurant. My mother, father, his cousin, my little brother and I, two of my aunts and two of my uncles, so a pretty big party. We had called ahead to get a reservation. The whole family had dressed nicely since we knew we were going somewhere nice for this special occasion. The restaurant we were going to was not the number one in the city, but it was pretty high-end. One of my personal favorite places to eat in the city. The whole staff dressed nicely, but the manager and sommelier both wore suits. We got to the restaurant maybe 15 minutes early, but our table was already ready, so we were seated right away. I was friends with the sommelier in particular and knew most of the staff pretty well, so I was talking to him a bit. We chatted about the wine they had gotten in recently. They had picked up a large collection from an estate sale that I hadn't been able to attend myself. I ordered several bottles from this new collection for the table and went to seat myself. The dinner rush was just starting as our waiter took our orders. Robert got up and headed for the bathroom, which our server pointed out to him. As he was coming back around the corner towards our table, a skinny young guy in a tacky suit snapped his fingers at Robert, who noticed and looked at him surprised and sort of offended. The man was loud. Very needlessly loud. This was a nice place. People were talking in muted tones. Hey, hey you, yeah, you, we're ready to order. Oi, beg your pardon, laddie. What are you going on about? Robert's accent was thick as oatmeal. Take my order, take my order now, we're ready. This was about the time that Robert realized the rude young man thought he worked at the restaurant. I do not work here, laddie. The rude young man was having none of this. His immediate anger was clearly apparent as he stood up. The situation was getting out of hand. I and my little bro both got up from the table to go back up Robert. We got there almost the same time as the manager. You can't treat me like this, don't you know who I am? Robert was recoiling. Having heard so much about Canadian hospitality, he was floored by this rude young man. The floor manager stepped between Robert and his aggressor as Robert was stepping back. Sir, I don't know who you think you are, but your behavior is unacceptable. I'm going to have to ask you to leave. I demand you fire this server. He was very rude. You can't treat me like this. My dad owns this place. I'll have your job. I'll have all your jobs. This guy was so loud that the chef had come out to see what was the matter. Dressed in black with a black heavy leather apron. Heavy leather knife sheaths on each hip hung on a belt around his waist. Tattoos all over his arms and neck muscular and a little over six feet tall. Chef was quite an imposing figure, particularly with the angry look on his face. At this point, the whole restaurant was staring at the rude young man. This is over. You're out of here. Get up and get out now. Chef's command allowed no rebuke. The skinny little pissant looked mortified. He and his lady friend both got up looking horrified and rushed out of the restaurant. I thought he was going to make another comment as he fled, but he just scurried away. Several people cheered and several others clapped as Chef retreated back to the kitchen. The excitement over, we ended up having a great rest of our meal. The floor manager ended up comping the whole meal, nearly two grand. Both my dad and I really wanted to pay, but he just refused to take our cards, so we ended up just leaving a big pile of cash on the table when we left. The following week, I went back to the place with a friend. The sommelier was just itching to dish the news. Turned out, the rude young man's dad had indeed owned the restaurant, a part owner. He was a wealthy local landowner, businessman and restaurateur. 
Unfortunately for that little pissant, his father had not been on his side at all. When he tried to get everyone fired, much to his dismay, his father instead took away his trust fund, the penthouse he was living in, and his car. Kid ended up having to get a job for the first time in his life. And I love the response by Ranger6 in the comments. Do you know who I am? Excuse me a moment, over the PA. Ladies and gentlemen, I apologize for interrupting your meals, but there is a party in this restaurant who apparently doesn't know who he is. If anyone can assist us in identifying him, we would be most grateful. But honestly, the one thing I'm thinking about in this story is imagine being the poor girl with this guy. And that's just one of the things I always think about. It's okay if they're on their own, they just make themselves look stupid, but imagine being the partner, the child, the parent of one of these entitled people. Just how bad would it feel, especially if you know how badly they're acting. Our next post was submitted by user slash dragons rule 18. I was shopping at Walmart and realized I needed to pick up a bag of cat food for my kitty. Unfortunately, the Meow Mix, which is the only cat food he likes, was on the very back of the highest shelf. And I'm only 5'1", so I couldn't even come close to reaching it. So I walk around the crowded grocery section looking for help, and then I spotted a guy wearing a white jacket who was stocking bread onto the shelves. I approached him, excuse me sir, do you work here? He turned to me with a smile, no, I work for Pepperidge Farms, but do you need some help? I thanked him and told him my problem. He immediately went with me and got the cat food down for me, even though he was short too and had to make a jump for it. I thanked him several times. Pepperidge Farm Guy, if you ever happen to read this subreddit, thank you so much for helping me. Even if you didn't work at Walmart, you really made my day. And I guess the world would be a better place if everyone acted just like this guy. But then I think about it and realize this whole sub would not exist if we didn't have entitled people in this world. Now the next story doesn't necessarily fit the sub very well, but I think it's a great story, so I'll include it anyway. It was around 9pm. I had just sat down on the couch with a cup of tea after an hour-long struggle to get my six-year-old boy to bed. All of a sudden, there's a tremendous noise out the front of my house. It sounds like the world is ending. A metal apocalypse. I leap up and run to the front of the window and squint out into the darkness of my usually quiet blue-collar suburban street. There across the road is my neighbor Johnny. He's dragging 12-foot long metal beams along the sidewalk, resting one end on the top of a big cage trailer, then trying to shove slide the beams down and inside. The noise is unbelievable. I watch for a couple of minutes in disbelief and growing anger as I notice about 50 more metal beams stacked behind him. This is not going to finish anytime soon. Then, to top it off, my son wakes up and starts making a fuss. I grab a piece of paper and write an angry message at Johnny in big block letters. My neighbor Johnny is profoundly deaf, hence the written note. He's lived in that house for all of his 50 years, and alone since his mother died a decade ago. He hasn't done so well by himself, I think. His house has fallen into disrepair, and he's hoarded so much scrap metal it has filled his property and flowed over the outside of his wall, encroaching on the sidewalk. I know the mess drives other neighbors crazy, but I don't particularly care. It honestly makes me feel less guilty about not mowing my lawn as often as I should. Apart from the eyesore, he's never bothered me in any way. I've barely had anything to do with him at all over the years, to be honest. At 9pm last night, however, I was spitting mad. Another huge boom echoes outside. Fantasies of physical violence flash through my mind. The blood rage takes me. I grab my angry note, put on my slippers and storm out the door in my pyjamas straight over to him. I'm a tall, heavily built, pretty mean looking guy. Johnny's about 5'5 five five and looks like a shrunken version of Zach Galifianakis. My appearance startles him and he looks up at me with a worried face, still holding one end of a metal beam, sweat running down his cheeks. I'm about to unleash on him. I look down at this small, hairy, 
deaf hobbit man in front of me. I look back across the street at my son watching us from behind the screen door. I look at the angry note in my hand. My anger evaporates and is replaced by something else. I feel ashamed. I consider how he's been deaf since birth and may not even realize how noisy he's being and feel even more ashamed. I shove the note in my pocket before he sees it. I point to my chest, then do a weightlifting motion with my hands. His face brightens and he nods excitedly. I walk over and grab one end of the beam. He grabs the other. I start helping him haul these 90 pound metal beams into his trailer. After 20 minutes, I'm breathing hard and we finally get the last one in. I feel him squeeze my arm. He's smiling up at me and mouths, thank you, the only word we exchange the whole time. I nod and go home. A couple minutes later, I'm in the bathroom washing the dirt and sweat away and my son comes in. He's angry and confused, like a disappointed mob that didn't get to watch the hanging they were promised. Why didn't she shout at him, daddy? You should have taught him a lesson. He's an idiot. Idiot being the strongest word in my son's vocabulary. I sat him down on the couch and put my arm around him. Cuddle up. I talked to him about the different ways I could have handled that situation and about neighbors and helping and being kind and about how you meet all types of people in your life. And the story of the scar by my eye and how much I regret the times I've been aggressive in my life. He's silent afterwards and seems to be deep in thought as I carry him to bed. I drove past Johnny today and he waved and did a bicep flex at me, like, hey, aren't we the two metal hauling muscle men of the street? I couldn't help but chuckle. And I think OP did the best thing he could in this situation. He knows he has an anger problem and he knows that he doesn't want his son seeing it. He wants his son to be a different person, a better person. And as tempted as OP was to yell and scream and make a fuss, he didn't and I think taught his son a very valuable lesson. Alright everyone, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this little video and if you did, subscribe to the channel for Reddit videos every second day and leave a comment telling me your own stories. But with that said everyone, that is it from me. I hope you all enjoyed and all I want to do is see you all here next time. See you later guys.